The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. With so many people living longer, the fear of outliving your money becomes a reality for many of us. Will I be a financial burden? Will I outlive my money? How will I be remembered? My name is Neil Himmelstein, president of Main Street Planning Group. Please contact me by visiting MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. I will introduce you to strategies that will guarantee you will not outlive your money, that can guarantee you will not be a burden on your loved ones. Through a collaborative approach, we will uncover solutions that offer tax-efficient strategies, lifetime income, and legacy planning. Choice, organization, direction, and education. That is the code we stand behind. Contact MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. And listen to me every Friday at 3 p.m. as I host the Main Street Code for Financial Success right here on 103.9 LI News Radio. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. I can always be reached at 631 631- 647-4694. I encourage your questions, your comments uh, in anything that we have to talk about or any type of financial planning that, that you're doing for yourself, for your children, for your grandchildren, uh, or for your parents. Uh, Main Street Planning Group is an independent wholesaler. We help hundreds of advisors across the United States, specifically in the areas of insurance. Our expertise is life insurance, long-term care, disability and um, again we have attorneys and accountants and insurance advisors from career companies and whatnot that reach out to us for creative ideas we have, are completely independent we don't work for an insurance company we represent 30 different insurance companies so our advice is always non-company specific um, and we hope to get you into the right product and do the right things and we don't charge for our consultations. Uh, we get our commissions or our payments from the insurance companies that uh, if we should decide to work together and work with, or from an agent who might be have an insurance policy that needs a wholesaler, that we, we, we sit in that capacity to help them, guide them to the right product, and the insurance company compensates us, not you. So I just want to let you know that. Uh, so today, I want to talk about a topic I've talked about multiple times, and that's term insurance, because term insurance is the most least expensive type of insurance you can buy, and there's all sorts of radio commercials and, and TV commercials from companies like Ethos and Selecticote and this and that, and people think that, okay, I'm buying something cheap. You can even go on my website and look at and, and run term quotes for how much it will cost you for term insurance. But there's many problems with going online and just buying any term insurance. Um, the biggest problem is even these no medical things and everything else, they look deeply into uh, using artificial technology now. There's so many resources out there that they can look at things in your medical records that will impact your coverage and will rate you based on stuff without going through somebody like myself who will sit there and go through your medical and advise you on what direction to take. Or maybe you have a medical impairment, but you're doing something about it to an insurance company. So in other words, maybe I have diabetes, but I watch my diet and my A1C is down low and everything else, and I've done something about it then they're not going to rate me. But electronically, they see you have diabetes, oh my God, you're going to get rated. Or you may not get coverage. So that's number one. But the biggest thing, and I have many clients that I'm reviewing their whole portfolio because they bought term insurance over the years. They've bought different companies and different things. And what we found and what is true today is the, one of the most important features of term insurance, especially when you're 50s and 60s and you're looking at your longevity and maybe you've outlived your term or you're coming near to outliving your term like myself 
and you say, I want something permanent, okay? I want something I can have for the rest of my life. Well, one of the great things that many term carriers have is term conversion privileges. What is a term conversion? Term conversion is technically if I'm, let's say, preferred or best rating class when I'm 20 and I buy a big term policy, well, maybe when I'm 40 or 50, depending on the length of term I buy, that maybe I have some things wrong. I've gained weight, I've got diabetes, high blood pressure, various things, or maybe I had a stroke or something. Well, that term conversion allows me to convert all or part of that policy at my rating when I was 20, when I was in great shape, which is a crazy good advantage. However, every insurance policy you buy, every term policy you buy, has different term convertibility privileges or some have none. So what I'm finding is, and I went through one particular client who's a very big client uh, this week, and he has several term carrier products with different companies. And some of these companies are, well, they're all top tier companies. They're not Mickey Mouse Life. Okay. They're, they're real companies. They're real strong, top rated companies. Well, let's just talk about each company. Company A, where he has several million dollars at a preferred rating, tells me they'll only convert to their best products only the first four years of the contract. So he's in year 11 or 12. So now he gets this very, very expensive conversion product. Okay? He can't get that preferred rating anymore, even though he has several million dollars with this company. After four years, that conversion privilege changed to only a conversion product. The conversion product even though it's at preferred, is already rated as if you're not preferred. It's just a not a great product. Okay? It's not competitive in today's marketplace at all. Company B that I was working with will convert to anything. He has his policy for 10 years, but they'll convert to anything they have. However, Company B, which is a fantastic company, I do a lot of business with them, only has a conversion product in New York because the rest of the products they're no longer selling in New York. So if you want my product in New York, you got to buy my conversion product like company A, okay? But if you live outside New York, you can get any of our great products. So my recommendation is, and by the way, he has property outside New York. And we, we are in the process of setting up a trust outside of New York that can own that policy so that if he wants to convert it, he can convert it for at least half price of what it would be in today's dollars. So that's a strategy just from term insurance. We're talking about post-term insurance, after he's bought the term insurance and convertibility. Company C, which is the highest rated insurance company in the United States only sells term and whole life. Now, their whole life is one of the best accumulating products in the universe. However, it's also the most expensive product. And to leverage the death benefit, which what he's trying to do, not accumulate cash, that's not appropriate for him to convert the third company that he has. So here, given his limitations and his health, which isn't as good as it was back in the day, you can see where it makes a difference what term you have. So it's not just buy the cheapest term and hope for the best. It's you have to review. Now, another thing that we have to talk about is I always say that every year you should review everything you have whether it's your term insurance, whether it's this, whether it's... But your insurance has to be reviewed. Why? Because even though he felt he was covered all this time, which he was, after the fourth year with the largest contract he has, 
he lost the ability to convert it to the best product for him today. He lost that privilege and he didn't know it. And the insurance company didn't tell him. It's in the contract somewhere. That person you call on that 1-800 number is not going to tell you. If you ask specifically, they should tell you if they know. What's the difference between the one I'm paying $10 a month or $11 a month? What is the difference? Well, no difference. You still get the same death benefit, only this is $10 a month. No, there are differences. There are major differences. Convertibility is a big difference. Do they have living benefits in that term? Some term now has living benefits. These are very important things you have to look at, which is why you work with Main Street Planning Group and myself, because we're going to set you straight and get you on the right course. You're listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I can always be reached at 631-647-4694. We're going to be right back after the break. Welcome back to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. Uh, you can check me on my website, themainstreetcode.com. Uh, if you miss an episode, I'm on Spotify and Apple, and I'm here every Friday at 3 o'clock. Or you can always give me a call if you have any questions whatsoever. And, you know, a lot of people have been calling in about various topics that I've talked about. Uh, my number is 631-647-4694. Before the break, I talked about term insurance and differences and this and that. And if your policy is not watched correctly, one of the key points I made is that you need to have a review because if it's not watched correctly. You may not have what you think you have or it can do what you think you can do, which is why I recommend please let us review your policies. Well, another topic that came up, which is hot and heavy today, is college planning and you know, people going back to college and a lot going on with the college loans that people already have. Well, I've talked on many shows about college planning and there's different assets. If you're saving for college, life insurance happens to be a great asset, which is not included in the faucet forms when you're getting loans or grants and everything else. Um, And there's a lot of planning strategies on college planning. And a lot of people talk to you about how to plan for college. But a lot of people don't talk to you about, okay, I've got my college degree, or I'm talking to a parent, and I've talked to a couple this week, that all of a sudden, the bill becomes due that they got to start paying those college loans back October 1. So, yes, some people had some money forgiven that have had loans for a long time on the books, but there's a lot of things that people need to know about college loans that haven't been looked at. The biggest thing that you need to understand about a college loan, the federal college loans, is they are on a variable interest rate. This is so, so important because back in the day, five, six years ago, when the interest rates were 2 and 3%, la-da-da-da-da, and then for COVID, you, f- you didn't have to pay any interest. They held it off. You didn't have to make any payments. Well, guess what? Those same college loans are now 6.5%. What does that mean? If, if I just recently graduated from college or I'm five years out or grad school and I've taken on debt, let's say, you know, today colleges are 50000 a 100000 a year. A graduate school could be fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a year. Maybe I don't have the assets to pay for it. Maybe I had some grants. But loans can accumulate a lot bigger than in the past. So for argument's sake, the the, the client I was talking to this week has $100,000 in loans. That is not uncommon for somebody in their 30s today. $100,000. It's a lot of money, right? And they hadn't really been paying on it and la-da-da-da-da and Biden's going to forgive my loans and everything's great. And now they're waking up and saying, holy crap. I have to pay this down. Now, this particular kid is making $50,000, kid, 30s, okay? Could be our child. Let's say they're making $50,000 a year. And one of the provisions that I just, you know, heard about this morning and understand this morning is rather than paying 10%, I can pay 5% of the loan. Okay, let's say I pay 
um, let's say I pay 10%, so I'm going to pay $5,000 a year, which I haven't had to pay. So that's like close to 250 a month. Call it 230, 250 a month. Okay, which is maybe I'm not budgeting it for. But let's say I like round numbers. Let's say I pay that $5,000, which is 10%. And my interest rate right now is 6.5%, which is lower than if I were to take out a mortgage, but that's what kind of they're going at now, the Fed loans. So I've paid that $5,000. Meanwhile, my loan at the end of the year is 106500 at 6.5% the potential of loan interest rates going up. So I've done my due diligence and I've made this payment and, and yeah, it was a stretch, but I made this $5,000 payment at 10% of my salary, which is a payment I haven't had to make. That's a big chunk. That's definitely a car payment. But instead of making a car payment, I'm going to pay this a month, you know, substantial payment. And guess what? Next year, I'm going to be starting with a loan of $101,500. i have lost money. I actually owe more. Compound, and that interest compounds negatively. So let's say you were on a good plan and you were paying $300 a month. Okay? You're losing money. It's, the loan is only getting deeper and deeper and deeper as the interest rates go up. Because you're not paying attention to the interest rates. And unfortunately, people in their 20s and 18s, this is the first loan that they've ever taken and the deadliest with this high interest rate rising. So you really need strategies now. How should I pay this down? How can I minimize this? Because it's not a fixed loan rate like a mortgage. Some mortgages are fixed and some have this increasing interest rate component and if you're not looking this is going to creep up and bite you in the butt which it's doing october 1 people are going to come to the realization oh even if i make these payments let's say at fifty thousand dollars a year i decide and i owe a hundred thousand dollars i'm going to pay a thousand dollars a month that's a lot out of somebody making 50 grand a year especially a young person maybe he's married maybe they're trying to get things going. That's a lot out of someone's budget. A thousand dollars a month. That's six thousand dollars. Okay, a thousand a month is twelve thousand dollars. So I've only paid off how much? From sixty five hundred of interest. I'll only pay that loan down thirty five hundred dollars at a thousand dollars a month, which is going to strangle me. I've only paid down $3,500. How many years do I have to continue paying $1,000 a month just to pay this loan off? So you really need strategies post-fact. So I'm talking not only to the students who have this, this debt, but to the parents. Now you have to plan, and you have to really look at what this loan is, what these interest rates are, just like you have to review all your insurance policies and if you just kind of went by and said, ah, somebody's going to take care of me, it don't work that way. There's going to be a day where you're going to come to grips with a very difficult situation where maybe you can't buy a car, buy an apartment, rent an apartment. Maybe that these loans are going to get so big that it's going to destroy your credit rating or your child's credit rating. And this is one of the things that we have to look at. Um, the government is trying to do different things, but one thing they haven't done is froze the interest rates on these loans. And that's the, going to be the killer. Because this compounding interest rate, and if the interest rates continue to rise, you've got big problems. So I encourage you to look at those loan rates, look at your term insurance, look at all your coverages, and get back to me in doing your planning because a lot of people will buy things or borrow money, put it in a drawer, 
and forget about it. And now after COVID, after we've had all these great savings on this college thing, the bill is coming due. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have some of this deferred or whatever, great. Most people aren't. So this is the dilemma that we're facing. Now's the time to look at it. Please give us a call. Let us help you with different strategies to take care of this. Now, we talked about that. We talked about your insurance policies. What if I'm older and I can't think I can't get insurance? And I hear this on the air, $9.99 a month. There's guaranteed issue policies out there. We can help you with that as well. Um, there's different policies out there that can help you no matter what your situation is. You're listening to the Main Street Code for financial success. I can be reached at 631 647 4694. If you miss an episode, you can check us out online at themainstreetcode.com on Apple or Spotify, uh, where I have my old shows. And again, thanks again. Have a great Labor Day, everyone. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its